this light is way too bright and it desperately needs a lampshade. So that's what I'm gonna make today. And uh, this is a piece of pine floorboard, a piece of masonite sheeting that I cut into a hexagon shape. And this is a couple of strips from some old wooden blinds. Oh, and I also need this one. I already have a vintage style LED smart bulb that I want to use and I think it's gonna look so good since the place it's going has a lot of plants and old stuff around it and the socket is actually the only thing I paid for here and I got it from a second hand store and I paid like three dollars for it but I used the Danish currency so I didn't pay three dollars for it. If I made this hexagon shape then I could put two strips of the blinds on each side and then create this lamella style lampshade but at this point I was just not sure where I would put this lampshade like should it be hanging under the socket or should it have the socket hiding inside of it I ended up deciding that having the socket inside the shade was the way to go and then make a two to three millimeters of spacing between the strips there's an easy way to make a hexagon and what you see here is me measuring how wide the board is, dividing it by two and then take off a millimeter or so from the radius of my compass. Then I made a circle and here I'm highlighting it so it's easier for you to see. You don't actually have to highlight it unless you want it to be easier to see of course. And then I put my compass on the line of the circle and then I make a mark where it crosses the circle and then I highlight it and I move the compass to the new mark that I just made and make a new mark after this and I just like repeat this until I reach the point of where I actually started. I make sure to only make a line on the outside of the circle so that I won't have any visible scratch marks on the inside of what ends up becoming the hexagon. And as you see, this is where I started and this is where I ended up, so that's a match. And now I just make a line between every mark and the mark next to it. Imagine the ruler is a fence of the miter saw and the pencil is the blade. This is how I'm gonna cut it and that should be a 60 degree angle but since the miter saw blade sits at a 90 degree angle compared to the fence then it will make a third degree cut but first I make sure that I have a place to start so in the beginning I actually just follow the line that I made and cut out the two parallel sides. Then and only then I turn on the dust collection to make sure I get my daily dose of sawdust. This is how it ended up looking and this is somewhat how the spacing will be in between the blinds too. Now I'll use this step drill bit to make a recess for the socket clamp or whatever you call it to sit into. But first, let's go to the ticking time bomb of a drill press to make a hole in the middle before finishing it with the step drill bit. And speaking of step drill bit, I think this step drill bit is getting dull and I'm actually not even sure if you can sharpen these or if you just have to go buy a new one. But if you know it, then you can write a comment and I think I will take it into consideration. Well, this is how it ended up sitting in the base. And before I go ahead and glue all the stuff together, I need to make a slight angle on the ends of some of these tiny pieces of blinds that will help stabilize the lamellas going downwards. And I start by taping them together, then taping them together with some scrap pieces to make them sit flat. And I actually started off by sanding at the wrong angle. And it doesn't need to be a perfect angle since the gap will be so tiny anyway but better close than completely wrong and i ended up with something like this which i assume is somewhere close to a 15 degree angle and now it's time to make the glue up but not like this to make it symmetrical I decided that plexiglass would make for a good spacer and it looked nice until I realized I glued it up on the wrong side and then decided it was about time to give myself some motivational speech. And this is the wrong way. I'm then I cleaned it up and then began gluing it up the right way until the big lady was calling me from the outside world. 
We started chatting for a bit. The lady told me some of the news. The neighbor bought a giraffe. Kind of weird. She also told me that she don't really like the cat food we're eating. And I agree. It tastes horrible. So we both decided that we will stop eating it. So that's good, I guess. And then I decided because she couldn't decide that she would stay outside. Because just standing in the doorway doesn't really help anything. And then I continued to brew up the rest of the Lamella Pass. If you have any suggestions, corrections or general ideas, tips and tricks, whatever, feel free to write them down in the comments. And I guess that telling you now that giving a like as well is very well received. If you like what I'm doing, of course, you don't have to do it just out of pure politeness. If you can call it politeness, it's like a favor that's not even a favor. If you don't like it, then it's just fake. So, yeah, you give it a like if you like it. That would mean a lot to me, of course, to see if what I'm doing is actually appreciated by anyone. Anyway, after half an hour or so, I removed the almost dried up excess glue since it's easier to remove now when it's not dried up compared to when it is all dried up. When I was all done removing the excess glue, I put a strip of tape down before putting the lamella pairs up next to each other with the spacing gained when folding in mind so it's the right distance from each other. I like recycling and a lot of stuff can be achieved with more or less free materials. My question to you is, do you like it and what kind of projects have you made with recycled materials? Do you have a suggestion or something I should try out? I've said this like three times already in this video, but don't hesitate to write a comment. Then a test roll to see if it matches up all the way around, and luckily it did. And now it's time to glue it up. And I glued it up and surprisingly there were no major problems at all. I used some rubber bands to keep a tight pressure all the way around and then some clamps at the place of the base because that could take a bit more pressure. In the end, this is how it ended up and I'm really pleased with it actually. But if I had to change anything, it would be the color of the cord since I don't really like the orange color. Well, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.